Pasqualmas tuos the Buffalo uh, Plains Bison now. He was given a, a job to uh, look after us. We looked at it as a, as a keeper for us. He's a very uh, unique and spiritual animal to us. young, young, young country with a great potential, with great people. First of all, you have great people, you have great talents, and you have great products. So that's are the three main ingredients that you need to shape any identity, any culinary identity. But how you do it? You have to be able to tap, into, to, to tap in into traditions. So what is tradition here? is the Aboriginal people, it's the First Nation. All of the chefs here should be able to tap in into this. That's why we came here. pure wilderness, and, and this is what I want people to leave their ego and their bullshit back into the land and come in here and join together and create energy. This is what it's about. It's shaping up energy. This is what I want also be a very, very definite part of, of Kugi Raw, is be able to bring people together, strip them down from all the crap, and say, okay, we're here, let's do some work together. It was incredible. I've never had the opportunity to skin a whole animal before, sacrificing its life for us minutes before we skinned it and, and dressed it was an incredible experience. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I want to pay homage to, to the entire animal by using a heart, which isn't widely used, essentially just making a salted bison heart based Bacon. Wheat berries, farro, um, certain barleys that are taking on the, the flavors of the land and really picking up the soil flavors. And so that's why I chose to use whole grains and cooking and kind of representing what Alberta does. Collaborating, sharing ideas mentoring one another, sharing knowledge is so important nowadays. There has to be on kind of on the same level. There's no me teaching you, you teaching me. Let's just share that. Let's just get create a beautiful flow. Today I've gone foraging and picked some rose hips. These have been dried from the winter time. Uh, they've dehydrated into something that makes great jam, great tea. I'm working with Alberta Hand Forge watercress. It's early in the season, so one of the vegetables that we like to use and one of the things we like to explore are um, freshwater aquatic plants. That will actually help us to move forward, to think different. And if you start with food, you can move on into other aspects of society. And that's also another thing we will learn from the First Nations. It's about this stewarding of the land. You know, how do you, how you care, how you, you, you empathize with the, with the soil, how you empathize with up there, you know. We are all, it's a very complex cosmo here. Beaver meats, I mean, obviously something extremely underutilized in cooking in Canada. Growing up, you learn a lot about the fur trade and how important the beaver was to the pioneers. So it, it kind of made sense to bring something that was so important to our nation's history. The wild uh, harvested morel mushrooms that are picked by Eric Whitehead that he actually dries on site and then he carries them back out. There's nothing like it in stores, so you know, I'm very proud of th that this came from our land. I'm just making some salmon pemmican. Some people make pemmican out of bison and 
an elk, but I decided just to dry this and it takes about four or five days to dry the salmon sides. And I don't use any salt or anything, it's just a natural drying in the wind. And then you can pack it and kind of eat it as a like, natural protein bar. The fact that you're there, you sweat together, you are close to one another, this, we need more of this. We need the chef to understand more that you need to put your hands into the dirt, you have to build things. And this is how you empathize with what you do. This is how you become more respectful for the land. This is how you become more respectful for the raw ingredients that you cook every day. You know, it's just gonna chop and make a beautiful piece of meat and the rest you're gonna chuck it away or give it to stuff. No, you're gonna be so intrigued about how can I treat this piece of meat or this vegetable best? How can I do that? These are the questions that I, I would like the chef to start to ask themselves. Usually my forte is lots of meat, uh, but today I'm just kind of going the opposite direction, just celebrating uh, locally grown vegetables here and just using some local housecraft vinegar and that's it. It doesn't get much simpler than that. For me, what is iconically Alberta is what's growing right now. And, and I sort of feel like I paid for this in pain because I knelt in some nettles on the island. I brought a dandelion. I'm gonna be making a dandelion mustard. Uh, the reason I chose dandelions is this time of year, there's really nothing growing in the mountains. There's still frost on the ground in the morning and all that's growing out there right now is dandelions. It's not just about here, I'm the coolest guy because I'm here on the island and I'm here with Cougar on. No, I'm here for a very specific reason. I'm here to bond with my peers. I'm here to share my knowledge with my peers. I'm here to learn. I'm here to give. I'm here to cook. I'm here to love, you know? I'm here to experience. So that's why it's the most important aspect. It's not about the food. Yeah, it's lovely that we make this lovely little dish at the end as a kind of a nod to the country that invites us there. But the most important aspect is not that. It's what comes with that. And that's why we're here.